welcome everybody. Uh, welcome to the our little panel today. We have uh, here our guests. Um, we're going to talk about how to approach a promotion agency today. We have Jack and Tom here. So they will basically... James. And James. Uh, James. <laughs> Jack, James, whatever you James, like. James, yeah, well... John. Sorry. I'm happy with that. Mary Poppins. <laughs> okay. right. We'll go with James. All right. Okay. So yeah, James and Tom, <laughs> sorry. So yeah, the... They will have a talk today. They will explain to you a little bit about the approaching promotions agency, and they they will have different sections, and then you can ask questions after each, each sections instead of asking everything at the end. So like this, we keep it a little bit more cohesive, and talk about the subject, finish it, and then move on to the next one. And we won't move on until you've asked a question. So <laughs> exactly, you know, there'll so, be really some awkward silences if you don't ask any questions. So you better ask. Yeah. <laughs> so let's get started. Yeah, so thank you. John. Um, Welcome. The, um, um, so yeah, we uh, are a DJ promotion, radio promotion, and TV promotion company. Um, we've got offices in London and in Sydney and in LA. Um, and yeah, there are some of the artists that we're happy to work. Um, so yeah, we've been going about 15 years now. Um, and yeah. Um, it's been, it's been fun so far. <laughs> um, we did a, a competition on the website. Um, so um, we partnered up with the Berlin Dance Event to offer a mentorship for artists. Um, so we, all these, well, some of these seminar things tend to be quite, I don't know, nothing interesting comes out of them at the end. So we wanted something interesting to come out of this particular one. So what we'll be doing will be, yeah, mentoring artists, um, giving them strategy advice, a and advice, and also some free promotions. And we are reassuringly expensive, Your Army. So this, <laughs> this, is, worth, this is worth some money. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll tell you who's won that at the end. Um, so thank you for everyone who's applied. There's been some really amazing uh, applications. So thank you for everyone that's, that's gone on and applied. So yeah, the, the, um, what we've asked, to talk about today is approaching a promotions agency. Um, and we've had some really good people approaching us and some really interestingly bad ways of approaching us. So these are the, these are the kind of our tips if you want to approach a company like ours. Um, so the first thing I do is, yeah, do you like any of the roster? <laughs> That's fairly obvious, I suppose. But, um, but yeah, just to see if they're relevant to what you're doing. Um, I always I always look at people's socials just to see their kind of their vibe, you know, how how they're talking, uh, if they're professional and all that always comes across on their socials. Um, um, yeah, and then I'd always look at like what successes they've had. Um, I mean, are they us for a start? But if they're not, make sure they're really really good. As James said, look at the acts they work with. Um, are the acts that you associate yourselves to as well? Yeah, um, yeah you want to make sure that if you're going to Go with a promotions company, they're going to do a good job for you. And I've noticed that a lot of promotions companies have their roster, but it's a roster they did 10 years ago. So again, the socials will tell you whether or not they're actually still working for those kind of acts. Um, and then once you've done that, you can either phone them up and ask them who the best person to email is. Um, or if it's just a contact email, then yeah, send a concise email with music and kind of links to your artist profile. That's kind of all you really need, I think. Yeah, and then, I mean, when you do get in contact with them, um, outline your objectives, like what do you want from the campaign? Um, like what DJs do you see supporting your music? Where do you fit? It's like really important that the promotions company knows what you want to achieve, because um, if you both know what you want to achieve, you can go for it. Um, then they can put together a really good proposal, they can put together a plan, and they can make sure they hit it properly for you when they're taking you on. Yeah. Um, and if they become interested, obviously you ask for costs, I'm always interested in campaign length as well and, and how many reports they do and when. Um, that's always interesting um, to ask because uh, that varies across all different promotions companies. Um, there are short, succinct tips on approaching a promotions agency. Yeah. Any questions <laughs> so far? I told you there's going to be awkward silences. There has to be a question. Yes. Do we have the mic here or should I give mine? Just a Same. second, it's coming. More awkward silences. <laughs> Think about another question. <laughs> yeah. You have time. 
but you can see why we didn't have the whole hour about approaching a promotions company because that's, that's it. But we'll be talking about other things now as well. So how a, a campaign will go, how you, what you'd expect a campaign to be like and what you as an artist will need to do um, as well, not just what the, what, what the agency needs to do, but what you need to do as the artist as well, or the manager or the label. Hello, hey. um, my name is Cameron. No. A little bit close to the speaker. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, obviously, when you get quite a few of similar emails mm. and um, uh, people wanting to work with you, and a lot of the time people have like that block method of, you know, what people suggest you add in that is like the standard way of proposing. Yeah. What do you guys look for that stands out, that makes someone stand out? Well, I think the main thing the, um, is, I think it's one of the marketing rules of engagement. You have to personalize your email. So that's another reason to look at their socials. So, you know, if, if you know that they've done an artist you admire and they've done something recently, then you say that. You said, I've noticed that you wrote this record recently. That's interesting. I saw that this DJ played it or I heard it out in this radio station or, you know, you've done really good work there. This is, you know, so it's relevant to them. So they, it's like being nice to them. You, 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 you sort of say, hey, you're great. And it's, it's great when you, when you get an email like that. You're like, okay. These yeah. persons have done their research. They know that what we do and they're interested. It's not just one of those, another one of those emails. Okay. So yeah, always personalise the email, I think. I'd say as well, just outside of a promotions agency, that's really important if you're speaking to labels. Like, there's no point sending a label 30 tunes. Like, look at the tunes you're sending them, the music you're sending them, is that what they play? Sometimes people will reach out to 10, 15 labels and they send them all the exact same music. Mm. Those labels don't all release the same music, so make sure you're... I mean, they might get 100 demos in a week. Make sure that the music you send them is what they listen to. And say, I like that release you just had on your label, or. I saw you play this out, it sounds like that. Like, make sure you personalize when you're speaking to them. You'll get much better engagement and feedback mm. from them. And I, I, I always get artists to actually title their, if it's a SoundCloud set, for example, of their demos, I always ask them to actually just put the name of the label at the top, so it's not just a generic demo kind of playlist. It's like your demo playlist for, and it's the name of the label or, or, or name of the agency. Again, it's, it's the personalization, I think, is in the detail. It's really important. That was a good question. I was, I was going to say that, and I forgot, so thank you. <laughs> um, anything else in terms of uh, approaching an agency? There's yes. another question. Uh, can you give some examples of objectives? Uh, take, the, take the microphone, please. So He's got a loud, clear voice. I think he's doing well already without the microphone. <laughs> We've <on> a record. <laughs> oh. Hello, uh, I'm Diego James. Can oh. you give some examples of uh, objective... Uh, Success like club gigs, festivals, doubling, SoundCloud, Spotify, Instagram followers. What was the question? Um, can you give examples of success objectives? Like, yeah. like I would engage you and then I'm yeah. playing Fusion or I'm playing yeah. Bergheim. Like what's success? Yeah, I mean, we'll come on to this a little bit later. But yes, I think there's, you're thinking about where, where does my music or the person I'm representing, where does that fit? Where does it start? So, you know, some genres, you know, they get really supported on a certain YouTube channel or a certain genre-specific thing on Beatport or, you know, there's an Australian radio station that plays a certain type of music. So I think, I think it's about knowing what the start points are for your type of music and then giving, giving the agency a, 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 an idea of, okay, these are the kind of things, these are the sort of places I want to get it played. Um, these are the sort of DJs that I'd love to be able to get it played. You know, I noticed that this radio station in, in Germany or France plays my type of music. Are you in touch with them? So, yeah, it's, it's about thinking about where the start points are for, for your type of music, I think. And thank thank you. you. Good, if that's that, we can go on to... Yeah, we wanted to talk about a whole campaign cycle um, and just, yeah, again, what, what we would expect to happen and what you need to do as an artist or a, a label or, or, um, um, or, or a manager. Yeah. I mean, I think before you set up a release and before you go do anything, you need to figure about, like, what's your story? Who are you as an artist? Like, what artist you would identify with? What's your identity? There's so much music getting released. There's so many artists out there. What makes you stand out? Um, and that's got to be across everything. So just, just figure out where you fit. Um, as we'll go on to it, it's like, what sort of labels do you associate yourselves with? what sort of artists, and we'll say this multiple times, but dance music is all about networks, and it's what sort of networks do you fit in. 
Yeah, what, what makes you unique as an artist as well, you know, there's, as I said, there's so many dance producers, you know, what, what makes you unique? Have you got a story? You know, are you coming from a certain social background? Anything, you know, what, what makes you unique as a person and as an artist? Um, I think that's, it's great if, you know, the, even like, for example, using a bicep who we work with, you know, they had their blog before, they were supporting other artists, um, they had, they, they were doing their label, they had, they had lots of things going on before they, you know, became, you know, um, successful. So, again, it was really easy to identify with them as an act because they'd done so many things that, you know, oh, they like that sort of music, oh, they're supporting those sort of people, you know, they're doing edits of these types of things. So, they had a really strong story before they had the, their big releases. So, yeah, it's, it's yeah. What's your story? Um, I always... We always think it's good, and, and, and even another thing when you're approaching a PR agency, not just to send one track. You know, um, I think it's really important to prepare for a release cycle of maybe two, three, four EPs before you start with your first one. Um, I think that's really important. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously if you're self-releasing, that's a lot more simple. Obviously, if you're waiting for labels, it can be a bit more complicated, but you need to have music ready to go. I mean. For instance, if you start getting played a lot on Radio 1 or your track's getting played out in clubs loads, you don't want, you build a lot of hype there. You don't want to then wait another six, nine months for another record to come out. Uh, as we said before, there's lots of music getting released, there's lots of new artists. So you want to be able to ride that hype and put a new record out. Um, so yeah, have music made, have it ready to go, um, be in the studio a lot. Yeah, there's nights we work with from the Netherlands and um, his objective was to get played on Friday night on Radio 1. His objective was to get remixes from maybe some bigger labels and some major labels. And yeah, Friday night Radio 1 would really help with that. So we helped him um, out of all the demos he sent us. We, we picked one and, and helped him do that. And we, we were successful. We, we got his, radio, his, his track played a lot on Radio 1, but then he didn't have anything to follow up with, so that was six months ago. Yeah. Um, so we met with him this, today and, and uh, said we need the other record. because. And so if, if you don't have to wait, if you've already got 20, 30 tunes ready, um, yeah, it, it really helps just to keep, keep the pressure on. Sorry, may I just ask a question? Mm -hmm. um, so what would be the time frame there for, like, for the follow-up? Between EPs? For, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> It can be anything, but 12 weeks even between EPs is, is kind of sometimes fine. Maybe longer, you know, it would be maybe two, two and a half months between each EP. Um, usually a campaign cycle is about maybe 12 weeks. Um, and then we also um, advise a lot of people to do kind of EP releases because it gives you two chances at editorial at the Spotify and Apple and all those sort of places. So we would maybe release a lead track first and then release maybe two or three other tracks as an EP um, and bring, the, bring that first track into the EP and then your distributor has two shots at editorial rather than just one. So yeah, so it maybe be lead track EP, lead track EP, lead track EP over the course of maybe a year. Perfect. Um, obviously, we get sent a lot of music and, and, it, and it's getting played out in clubs so the, it's an obvious thing to say but the sound quality, the mix down, you know, is really important. Um, so if there's some brilliant producers who've got amazing ideas, but they they rely on other people to do the mix down, and and that's that's a good combination. So yeah, make sure that your mix down is comparable to your contemporaries before we send it out. Um, yeah. Yeah, and just on that, obviously, look at the different variations of the track you've got. Have you got an extended? Have you got a dub mix? Have you got a radio edit? Obviously, if it's an 11-minute track, you're not going to have a two-minute radio edit. But, but have a think. There's, there's an artist we work called Sam Gerling. Um, he gets played a lot on Friday Night Radio 1. Uh, last week, he got played Wednesday night. But they emailed me in the morning saying, have you got an instrumental? We want to play it tonight, but we need an instrumental to play. He didn't have one. Um, luckily, his mastering engineer was able to turn it around in a few hours. But if not, they would have had to either play an unmastered track or not played it. And just have the versions ready. There's, there's many times I get sent music. Um, I don't know, maybe a great dance track with a vocal in. And I'm always like, have you got an instrument or dub? Just not every DJ plays vocal tracks. Or sometimes it's useful to have that extra edit. Definitely. Um, again, you know, yeah, as we touched on earlier with the, with the question from the audience there, yeah, what platforms would your music get attention? You know, have that. Have that in your mind before you go in. Have that in mind that you're communicating that to the agency. Um, and of course, you know, um, you can do some of that yourself as well, of course, you know. Um, I also, 
it's kind of a pain, but Spotify is the only visual kind of um, indicator on how popular an artist is sometimes. Um, there are others, but, um, but yeah, it's the most visual. So I always, there's, and people are always moaning about Spotify and moaning about the editorial, um, but there's things that you can do as an artist that, are, that you can do before you release. So um, obviously make it look good, um, have all the information there, have your social links on there, but there's so many things you can do on platforms like Spotify and Apple that, um, that will stand you in good stead before you release. So the obvious one is to do one of your, a, a playlist, right? So it, whether it be a themed playlist or just a playlist of the tracks that you're playing out as a DJ, anything like that, and you regularly update it and you get your socials and you point to the, to the, to the, um, to the playlist. And the idea behind that is, is that the more people that follow that playlist and follow your artist profile, when you do release a track, then they'll be really more likely to listen to it on week one. And if you list, get lots of people to listen to it on week one, the data will be good, and therefore Spotify more likely to put it into editorial playlists. So it's, it's, it's really important that first couple of weeks of um, data on, 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 on platforms like Spotify, Apple, Amazon, yeah, the, and, and they do some, and you know, Spotify, you can do your own podcast on Spotify really easily, playing the music from Spotify. There's lots of things you can do on these platforms. So again, instead of worrying or moaning about Spotify, do something. Um, again, we talked about objectives a lot. Um, yeah, we, we were going to say, obviously, we spoke about objectives a bit earlier, um, like what DJs do you want to get your music played out or what labels do you want to reach? I think it's really also to look at like touring. Um, so do you want to play in a certain location? Is there a certain club you want to play at? I don't know if you want to play at Watergate, do you, we target Watergate residents if you want to play at a festival. I mean, we work a lot with Youssef um, in Liverpool who runs Circus Records and Rich McGuinness who books that also does a lot of other festivals around the country. So if you get all those residents playing it, they're going to notice your music getting played out. So it's having a look at where do you want to play especially locations, and we can, you can target that. As I said before, again, it's the networks thing. It's looking who's going to help you, or you develop as an artist. Yeah, so if your priority is to tour in the Netherlands, we can target loads of DJs there. We can target the radio stations there. We can target the, the DJs that we know that book their own nights there. So yeah, it's, and, and, and those are the people that we'll maybe do personal emails to and personal reach outs to. So yeah, knowing what your objectives are really helps an agency to know what, what they can do to help. If you're self-releasing, um, the distributor is important. Um, most of them don't do anything, um, but um, some of them do. So yeah, I, I, would, I would, instead of just choosing one, do a little bit of research, ask around, you know, are any distributors actually making a difference to people who self-release or to smaller, um, smaller releases? Um, so yeah, it, it, it is important if you're self-releasing because they can actually make a difference, um, or not. And people, yeah, there's, yeah. yeah there's, there's, obviously a lot of people in, in, in this room and, and the, from, the, um, from the applications we received, you know, there's... there's yeah, Bit Beatport's always going to be a major part of, like, a, a established artist and emerging artist. Um, so if you are an emerging artist, if you've got sales as a label, as an artist under 3,000 pounds, 3,000 euros, 3, euros, you can apply for the Beatport height chart. Um, it's a great way to get noticed, um, so make sure you're always doing that. If not, um, if you're larger than that, um, you can apply to have features. You should also always be looking at doing a Beatport chart around release. Again, you can use that to drive people back to Beatport to buy your record. It's all about those extra additional little content ideas. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and of course, outside of DJ, outside of radio, there are other channels of people that can support you, YouTube channels. Yeah. SoundCloud. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's really important to look at Instagram channels as well, be it like, I don't know, Tech It Deep or uh, Mr. After Party. Um, they're all additional areas where your music can live and where your fans can be. Um, yeah, so make sure you're focusing on them. A lot of, it's, it's weird, the last year, SoundCloud has become so much more important. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and a place where labels are looking to sign records. Um, so yeah, it's, it's interesting that that platform actually has, has become quite um, yeah, yeah many, influential now. Many of, many, especially both indies and majors are looking at tracks which are going top of SoundCloud charts and, and signing them. So yeah, it's useful to have your music on there, even if it's records which, for instance, you're not too sure what you're doing, if you're not going to release it, like 
you can always put it on SoundCloud and see what happens. Yeah, edits of things. Yeah, they're, they're, they're quite popular. Yeah, there, just have it, make sure you have a profile there. It's important. Yeah. Um, yeah, social media is obviously important. Um, Pre-release, you know, getting your socials ready. Um, what you're saying on there, you know, um, even stuff that isn't, you know, so you, if you want to regularly post stuff on there, I won't. I'm not going to do a social media thing, but <laughs> you know, just the simple thing is, it, it obviously, releases great. Um, but are you, have, you, have you got any other in, interests? You know, is it fashion? Is it ecology? What is it that, that, that you want to talk about? And that, if you can think of, okay, I've got three things I'm interested in, and then you go, okay, well, I'll do that one this week. I'll do this one next week. It just gives you a little bit of a schedule just to work to. Um, and obviously, you don't want really to sell, sell, sell through those channels. So the more interesting things you're putting out and talking about, the more likely it is once you do put a, a pre-release order or something, then they might interact with it. So, so yeah, that's really important as well. And that content, yeah, yeah, I mean, content's a simple thing, but um, nowadays, again, with good, good distributors, you can, in their back end, you can get the horizontal and vertical videos for your Facebook and, and Instagram, um, and yeah, they'll generate um, kind of uh, nice looking assets for your for your socials um, and then you can always always make a visualizer as well yeah so little visualizers to, once a record out you can use that across Instagram um, you can use it on YouTube as well um, anything which ties back to the release sort of the artwork and also your brand as well and again if and the next quick thing is if you're working with a little indie or if you're doing it yourself it's really important that you register the release with your local collection society so that's GVL in, in, in Germany for example or the PPL in the UK, um, the reason being is, um, well, there's money there for the label, um, but also it means that there's blanket licenses. So that means that, for example, if a TV show in the UK wants to use something on a on a soap opera or um, you know anything, they can use it. When it. So if it's registered on the PPL, they can use it. So and that's great because there's, there's income there. You get it's not you don't get income up front, but you do get performance income as the writer of that record, and the record label also gets a performance income. So really important that um, that those are that, that your releases are registered with your collection society. Um, again, for the writer, make sure that you're registering with 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 your local collection society, Gemma or uh, PRS, um, or if you've got an, a publisher looking after you, then they'll do that for you. Um, and then coming on to maybe a little bit more important things that, or, or the things that we do all the time. Um, yeah, service, we, you know, dance music is amazing. You can actually, if, if, there's a, if, there's, if you've got a track that maybe, do you know, I think lots of BJs are gonna play this record, then it's, you can get a record living in clubs for a long time, months before you release it. And we, do, and we really enjoy doing that as a promotions agency. It's really good fun to be able to just kind of go, right, which DJs are gonna make a difference to this release? And you give it to them, two, three months ahead of release, and you go, there you go, you've got one in five people have got this release, you know, you're, you're, the, you're one in five, please play it whenever you can. Um, and um, so, yeah, so again, prepare your music, you know, really up front of release, because if you've got an, an agency that, are, that know what they're doing, they can start seeding it early. Um, and yeah, th those DJs, those VIP DJs, those big DJs, you know, the more likely to listen, because they, they make their own music now, <laughs> they, their friends make music, they've probably got their own record label. So to get into their set, it needs to be special musically, but it also needs to be exclusive, I think. Yeah. And it's more reason for them to play the record out. So yeah, we really enjoy doing that. We, you know, we, we've had... I mean, we're doing, in, we're doing like the, the new Fortet record, which oh, just yeah. came out today, KH. And um, I mean, I spoke to you and Vicar maybe like six, seven weeks ago, just gave it to him. I was like, look, three, four people in the world have this. Um, straight away, he's playing it out. He was playing it in Leeds the other weekend and ended up doing a, a like an impromptu back to back with High. There's loads of videos of him playing it out. Um, he just tweeted the other day that he's going to, he's doing Boiler Room for Fly in Edinburgh. He said he wants to do 100% unreleased tunes of himself, bar the four tech record. I mean, they're the things which really help drive a record forward. Um, so, yeah, getting stuff to DJs early and giving it exclusive to, to the, the top tier names, you can create a lot of buzz there. Yeah, and, and that's obviously for a well-known artist, but it happens, we had a debut artist that we, um, that we did that with. We, in fact, it was, it was maybe six months pre-release and we got it to the Blessed Madonna and, and people like that and there ended up being videos of them playing at big festivals um, and that debut release went on to be a, a Radio 1 playlist record, which, you know, a, a sort of a, a really big record. So, yeah, it, you know, um, it's, 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 it can really work and it's, it's good fun to do it as well. One question, now talking mm. about timeframes again, 
Um, you're going back six months before mm -hmm. the release already. So how long yeah. do you have to think about promoting your release? Well, it, obviously, you don't do that with every release. Um, you know, when you hear something, you kind of go, okay, that one can live for a long time. It's got legs. It can keep running. Um, so, yeah, well, you wouldn't do it with every release. Um, but I think, you know, for that debut artist, you know, they had nothing to lose to wait. You know, we said just wait, don't release anything. Just this is a this is a banger. It's like teasing. Yeah. If, yeah. if, if you think like, for instance, if if the, I don't know, say you want Dixon to play your record, give it to Dixon a few months ahead. Let him know he's the only person in the world who has it. If he likes it, he's gonna play out. You're gonna get championed by him. You really think about who, what DJ is gonna make a difference to you, and that's when you can start really far ahead. There's nothing better than giving a record to someone saying no one else in the world has this, just you. So what's the maximum stretch like? Up. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we, we, it depends on, on, on the time and cycles. That, so we always look at festivals and, and seeing what's coming up. So if, if there's a lot of things happening that we know that the, the DJs we're targeting the music at will be playing at, then we can see a whole six months worth of action. But maybe if it's if you're starting in November, then it's maybe not so much. So it depends on that kind of thing. But yeah, usually six months is a long time. It, maybe three months would be nice. Yeah. Um, but with independent record labels, they've got their own release cycles, so you tend not to have that type of time. Yeah, sometimes, like, it's, it's a luxury on average, something. it's, like, if you are getting started ahead a lot of time with an indie label, it's maybe six weeks ahead. Yeah. Okay. So you should, you should at least be doing, like, at the very minimum, four weeks ahead. But, yeah, I mean, even if you're uploading stuff to your distributor, you normally have feedback from DJs. You need to upload a month ahead of release, so think about it. You need to have a load of good DJ support and traction a month ahead of it being... Uploaded. Mm. Yeah, least. the distributor has only got two chances to pitch a record to the DSP editorials. So they pitch, as you say, four weeks up front of release, and then they have a second pitch point, which is two weeks after release. So you need to have everything that's happening around a record within that six week period. So, All right. Any questions on the campaign pre release? Questions in the crowd? Uh, Another question here? We need a mic. Can we have a mic? Don't hide it. <laughs> <laughs> He's always hiding, isn't he? He wants to keep it in that box. Um, so, like you were saying, um, to getting your tracks to big guys like Dixon or Solomon to mm. play mm -hmm. out, knowing that they're the only one in the world to have, these guys are also receiving huge amounts of tracks on emails on the daily mm -hmm. what would you say is your best way to try and get that record through them instead of like sending it to them and just hoping luckily they f like fall upon it when they open their emails or something yeah i've heard um maybe going through guys that are smaller that are getting tracks played by dixon or so but are there any other methods than just shooting your shot and most of the time they're not going to see that record yeah there's, there's lots of ways of doing it um, you know, people that maybe can't afford a promotions company will go out there and hustle themselves, you know, and get out there and talk to people. And so that always helps, you know, people that are, you know, become, you know, kind of uh, get to be known by these DJs. Um, but uh, for a promotions agency, we have to um, be trusted by the DJs. So for us, it means that we can't take on music that isn't good enough for that, that, that those people. If we send two bad records to Dixon, he's not gonna listen to the third one. So, so yeah, it's, it's about quality control for an agency, but there are other ways to do it if you're, a, yeah, if you're on your own. Yeah, you, know. you are right in terms of, if you, again, if you're doing it yourself, for instance, if you send it to, yeah, maybe not Dixon, but to a load of other Innovisions artists, they're playing out, they're gonna be around him playing the record out, he's gonna hear them play it. So again, I mean, it's important, yeah, if you, if you're not going for them, go for the people, their network around them, the people on their label. I mean, the new people are releasing on their label. Um, like, tie yourself into that. Hmm. Any other questions on the pre-release stuff? Fine, 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 <laughs> fine. Uh, so this is during release. Um, yeah, as we're saying, the, you know, these bigger DJs get filmed, and it can make a massive difference to get a video of them playing it out. 
It's something we concentrated along during, on, in, in lockdown. We had to do this a lot. Um, it's difficult to get um, their tour manager or whatever to do a video. Sometimes we can do it. Um, but we also target the ones we know are being filmed by like Nick's Mag or you know, somebody like that or the boiler rooms. So yeah, we target those ones a lot and we sort of look at the, the next six months and see where these DJs are playing and if any of them are going to be filmed. Um, because if you can get a video like that, and then you put the buy link underneath the video and you put it up on your socials. And even if you just put five euros, 10 euros, 15 euros, you know, and target it, um, it can really make a big difference. We've, we, we've, we've done that and got, you know, a, a record that was nowhere into the top of the Beatport genre charts. Um, yeah, so it, it really works. Um, yeah, again, you know, we send reports weekly, so I, we always recommend that the artist on the other end of the reports looks at them <laughs> and then sees, oh, that person likes my record, that person likes my record. Why not reach out on, you know, on socials or reach out in the real world and, and say hello? You know, it, all those things make a difference if you do it in the right way. Obviously, don't be pushy, but, you know, um, that... Yeah, that, that can really work for people. Um, and, and, you know, even just adding them on Twitter, or, you know, pe people quite like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot can come from that, be it like collaborations, remixes. I mean, just make sure you follow up with them. Yeah. Um, and again, you know, again, as I just said, point to your preferred site. Maybe your objective is a beatport top of the genre shots. Maybe your objective is to get more of your followers on Spotify. Whatever your objective is, make sure that that buy link is pointing to that, that platform. Um, and, and yeah, make sure that you, you've got some fun, engaging content. If you don't have videos, yeah, um, just make sure it's a nice bit of art, whatever, a nice piece of artwork, whatever it is. Um, but yeah, it's really important that you do your job on, on the other end um, as the artist um, while we're doing our, our stuff. Again, as we talked about, um, all these DJs have got their own labels, they've got their own things going on. So if you do see that they're playing out the record, yeah, ask them for a release, ask them to do a remix. You know, all those things can really make a big difference, and that's the power of DJ promotion. It, it can get you into all these networks. Yeah, and then obviously react to the feedback. So look what's coming. Where's your track getting played? Who's it getting played by? I mean, DJ promo is technically a, a pure form of market research. So you're seeing where your record works, where your music sits. So follow up on that. I mean, if your record's getting played in Italy, then I mean, maybe if you're an independent, not so much, but definitely a label, you should be doing some extra digital spend there. You should maybe be looking at, right, on the next release, do I need to focus on some Italian ra radio, um, some Italian press? Um, have, have a look where it's, where it's reacting, because that's where you need to focus on going forward. One question. Mm. How do you track, actually, the direction of people and where it's played? How do you keep track of that? Yeah, mm. of course. That's a good question. Um, <laughs> so the only thing you can do as an agency is to get somebody to listen to the music. That's their first job. Um, so again, that's so hopefully they trust us, so they'll listen. And then once they've listened, yeah, it, it's out of your hands, right? So um, so we can see in our back end if they've downloaded. It. So that's a that's a yeah. good so that's a good indicator that they're going to think about using it. Um, and then the only way that you know if they've used it is yeah, if you, somebody tells you they've played it out or you get a video of it. We do, we do, like, we do speak part. to them a lot as well. So for instance, if I, and if I, again, it's those like top tier names which I know is going to make a difference. So for instance, if I've given a record to Yob Yobs and I know the artist really wants it played by him and he's, yeah, I'm going to play it, I'm going to play it. In two, three weeks time, I'll speak to him again. How did it go down? Oh, it went down great. So I mean, it's using, I mean, that's what we've done over the last decade or so, is built those personal connections and DJs trust um, us to provide them with the best music. Um, so, yeah, we, we, we interact with them. We make sure we know what's going on, where they're playing stuff out. And then, yeah, there's other ways, like, we maybe will follow up and ask them to add something to a Spotify playlist if they have one. Or, in, as James said, if we know mm. they're doing a mix mag lab coming up, we'll be like, can you place it in that mix mag lab? So it's just being very aware of who's got your music and where they're playing it. Yeah, and just remind them to play it, you know. <laughs> and they don't mind sometimes. They go, oh, yeah, sh shit, I should play that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and, and this is something for another panel, but the, there's music recognition technology is, I think, going to be really important for DJs and for music producers. It could actually save the industry, I think. This is actually what's missing, I think. This, yeah. Uh, so, you know, I, we also have a publishing company and, um, for example, in the Netherlands, I keep saying the Netherlands. <laughs> anyway, in the Netherlands, they've got really good music recognition technology in, in, in the DJ booths. And so you it's the first time ever that you actually know that was played at that time at that club to that many people. And the writer of that 
piece of music gets a royalty. That would be nice. Wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's never, it's, yeah. It's, it, so in 10 years' time, fingers crossed, people making underground club records that are made to be played in clubs, they're not made to be listened to on Spotify. They're not made to be played on radio. They're made to be played in clubs. So if you can get actually money from your getting it played in clubs, it'll be, it'll be game changing. You know, um, something to work on. Yeah. Anybody who has suggestions to that, it's something. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, we, we're always, you know, yeah, asking the, the collection sites around the world. You know, are you? When are you putting more music recognition technology in the in the booths? You know, because it's yeah, it's it's gonna it's gonna really help. It's gonna be key. Yeah, the black boxes they use here, they're also not working properly. Right. It's very hard right now. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. should be working in the future. But anyhow, any any more questions to the subject right now? Okay. <laughs> so this is after release, post release stuff uh, to think about. Yeah. Um, again, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, have a look at that support again. Um, and yeah, a key thing is, are any of DJs who are getting back? Do they have labels that you'd like to uh, release on? I mean, there's records we've had which Simon Dunmore's been playing out and have been signed to Defected. Mm. There's records which Jamie Jones has been playing out and been signed to Hot Creations. So look who's got back. I mean, obviously the promotions agency should be able to advise and help you with that as well. But yeah, have a look. Who's got labels you can release on? Um, and then you're just going on to that. We spoke about it before, but yeah, follow up with them. Speak to those artists. Um, you may get collaborations with them. You may be able to do a remix for them. Again, it's about becoming part of their network. Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously collaboration can, can generate amazing music, but it also means that you've got another artist there to, to promote your music and vice versa. So yeah, it's, it's, it's nice, to, nice to collaborate. And there could be some negative feedback. We, and we're always honest. We don't say, oh, it's all been great. You know, there might be some negative feedback. Um, so I, I think it's worth just, yeah, taking it all on board, whether sometimes it might be difficult. But take it on board. You know, it, it can help you think about your next releases. The positive feedback can help you think about how you promote your next release and the type of music. Maybe say, actually, that track went down really well on the EP. That one didn't. So actually, I've got another track that sounds like that. I'll, I'll release that next rather than, you know. So yeah, be reactive to, to the feedback. It's market research, after all. Um, well, what worked? Yeah, do more of that. Um, you know, all the stuff we've talked about during release and, you know, which piece of content was people did they engage with. Just learn every time you release something. Keep active in your socials in between. As I pointed out earlier, you can still point to things. You know, you can still do playlists. You can still do other things. So keep that stuff going. And again, you know, thinking about your objectives and making sure you're still pointing towards those places. Another thing you can do is get people's email addresses because Facebook and, and Instagram, you don't own the data, right? So um, we always encourage people to try and. You don't email them every week, but maybe it's you know maybe it's on release date or something that's interesting coming up. I think, yeah, trying to in America this is actually yeah they do it a lot in America to get people's personal email addresses. How to get personal email addresses is obviously another thing. Yeah. So digital marketing, of course, you know, but you can do pretty simple things like competitions to do a remix of your track or. Um, free downloads. Free so downloads, yeah. Oh, if you're, if you're doing a gig, uh, you can work with the promoter as well to get yep. the emails of the people who are buying tickets. But it allows you to directly retarget them if you have another release coming up or if you sell merch, for instance. Yeah. yeah. Why, why does the club promoter have all the data? <laughs> Interesting question. Um, yeah, as I said, keep, keep things going. Don't leave big gaps. And then, yeah, if things are going well, then, yeah, get a little industry email address you know, whatever, you know, be your own PR, you know, um, again, you know, are there, you know, are there any industry people like agents, if you haven't got an agent, then some, if the campaign's going well, then yeah. tell them in a, in a, in a nice, constructive, yeah, you, you can relay concise way. all the feedback, all the support you've had, you can, I mean, if you're speaking maybe outside of a promotion cam uh, company, like outside of a campaign, maybe you can speak to a local publication or an online website, or as James said, if you're looking for an agent, let the agent know who's been playing your music, um, again, look at uh, agents who are associated to those sort of artists, but yeah. This, this panel is supposed to be called Approaching a PR Agency, and, and we don't do PR. <laughs> so uh, that's why we changed it. But is, are, are there any magazines that you still look to for music recommendations? Do you read magazines? 
No. Uh, See, well, that's yeah, why it's not called to. approaching. A, <laughs> that's why it wasn't called approaching a PR agency. There you go. That's the reason. Um, oh, oh shusha, shaisa. <laughs> um, uh, any so questions? You, any questions? That's it. Any questions? No. Yes. Thank God. <laughs> Yes, uh, two, two questions. The first is very practical. What's the, your favorite way of, uh, the, of listening to stuff you get sent? Do you prefer Dropbox, SoundCloud? What is it? What's your favorite? I really like SoundCloud. but it's, Just a mashup. Yeah, different people like different stuff. Don't they? I like SoundCloud because I can see a bit of a visual point to it, be artwork, or and I can link straight back to the artist profile as well. A Dropbox link is just a Dropbox link. Um, but yeah, whatever it is, like, some type, like, don't send like five SoundCloud links, send one, as we already said, with the concise tracks, which you think are going to work for them. But yeah, different people like different stuff. We, industry side, use something called Disco, which some people mm. use. But I think for artists, SoundCloud's a really good way. Yeah, uh, anything you, you, you would tell us, you absolutely don't do it? I think something like Dropbox is quite kind of, yeah, it's just a, a waveform. It doesn't give you much. Yeah, don't, don't send the WeTransfer link as well. Yeah, don't okay. send a downloadable, yeah. Right. No, and then, um, no, thank you. If, you, if you're just getting started, you've done your work, you have like a few tracks that you uh, think are ready to go. Uh, would you recommend first approaching an agency like yours to do some PR and self-release and just promote it or first approach a label? Yeah, I mean, yeah, the, the, if you can get a label you want to release, obviously you'd, you'd, you'd want to do that because, again, you know, those networks that, that a good label can provide are, are going to sustain your career. So uh, what, what we generally do, so... Um, a lot of our producers, that, for example, in our publishing company, they, they tend to have maybe a couple of releases on labels during the year. So, you know, and, and that label has got their own release schedule, so they go, well, I can only release that in November. And then the other one says, I can only release that in February. So they've got like an eight-month gap. So that's when we say, well, why don't you do a self-release, mm -hmm. you know, and, and do, a, do one in the middle of, of those. Um, but of course, yeah, I mean, obviously you'll be sending out the demos if you don't get any, any feedback, which might not be anything to do with the quality of the music, um, then, yeah, self-release. Yeah, and, that, that self-releasing can be your own label as well, so you can yeah. start building your brand around that. Um, if you're going to self-release, you may as well have a label which you own um, to back it. Yeah. Was that two questions? Or was that one That was two questions. Yeah, yeah. it was two There's questions. Yeah, <laughs> hey. Um, yeah, like this. Uh, <laughs> I have a question, um, and that's more for yeah smaller artists or when you're, say, doing the PR yourself and mm -hmm. think about yeah involving, whether it's a freelancer or a smaller agency or something. Um, we did that now for a release with someone who said, oh yeah, I'm you know I did that uh, professionally and I'm gonna do it again. So we gave him like one or two months, three months before the release, and it turned out the guy was. Not full of shit, but yeah, <laughs> it was not good. Some shit. Yeah, the, yeah, like just nothing, you know? So okay. now we're one month ahead of the release okay. and he's like been promising a lot and now we literally know, okay, it's like 10 contacts and they're terrible. So there's pretty much two months okay. wasted. So, so, so uh, <laughs> did he target people that you agreed with? Oh yeah, he did, but yeah. they're just- But really, they haven't really, listened? They're just, yeah, they're just really small and nothing comes out of it. So there's like oh, I see. no name, outlets ah. like my network and I don't even have a big one yeah. like my context from previously like a bigger so my question to come to the point is uh, if you realize or like what, what would you see as a good strategy or approach to prevent this from going too fast now I know for the future but like what would be a good timing or a good way to kind of to prevent it, it yeah to like know if it now, isn't working yeah because now it's a bit too late to get someone yeah. proper involved but you know like well, again, I think what yeah. I touched on earlier is we can see if somebody's listened or downloaded. So mm -hmm. if, if, if an agency is saying to you, um, the people that you targeted, the people you agreed were your top tier targets, if, um, if Solomon has listened to the record, the agency have done their job, right? And then he hasn't downloaded it. That means he didn't like it. So mm -hmm. as long as the agency is saying, look, I know that eight out of 10 of the people that we targeted has listened to it, but they haven't downloaded, they've done their job. Yeah, they have. They, if they haven't played it, it's it's difficult to make someone play a record, you know. Um, but if they've listened to it and they've decided not to play it, then I'd say the agency have done their job. Yeah, but you, the agency can and then but should look at other areas to build that record in. So, for instance, yeah. I said if it's not working with Solomon, 
what other artists could it work with? They should advise. Like, we should then go after these artists. Like, yeah, we do that a lot. We keep like, even, you know, we get, we come up against that. You know, not all, not every record goes, you know, perfectly. So you're like, okay, well, they haven't done it right. And so we'll think oh, two weeks later, we'll think, right, who else? You know, let's try another few DJs out, twenty DJs out, and keep trying. You know, yeah. Um, so yeah, if 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 it's just oh, we've done this and it's not worked, then yeah, yeah. Usually, you, you should have a plan B, C, D. Yeah. Is that the same also when it comes to reviews, features, premieres, when you reach out to press outlets? Would you say it's more or less the same? Yeah, again, if, if an agency has got a reaction from that outlet, then they've done their job. You know, if they haven't, then they may not have. Yeah, yeah but yet yeah, again, with press, like if, if, if a press contact's passed, they should be looking at advising on other contacts, mm -hmm. yeah. other areas to try and get a premiere or somewhere else to host a record. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Anybody else? No. Cool. So yeah, as we said at the beginning, um, we did a yeah competition um, to win um, kind of yeah some free promotions from your army. Um, you know, I, yeah, we've done a few of these kind of things, and we'd like to be able to have something come out of it rather than it just be a talk. Um, and so what we're going to do is yeah we we got. Quite a few applications, and there was some really good music there, wasn't there? Yeah, there were some really, really good bits. Um, so, um, if you didn't win, sorry, it's, it's, it was just um, uh, it was some really good stuff in there. Maybe, maybe you were actually further on than than, um, than maybe we thought we'd get, if you know what I mean. So, it wasn't all down to the music; it was down to other things as well. But thank you for all the applications; it was great. But yeah, we have decided, and the winners are. <laughs> Oh man! Yes. Yeah. So, Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So we were gonna play so some of the music. Cameron's been asking all the questions. You see, yeah. he's, he's hungry. <laughs> he's hungry. Um, okay. So yeah, which one do we want to play? That one was. Yeah, it? play that one. So yeah, we want to just play a couple of just briefly play a couple of the tracks if you don't mind, just a, um, just a little bit, um, and then and then we'll talk about what we hope to be able to do. You feel free to have a boogie, you know, have a dance. Or be quiet. Quiet, isn't it? Can we have a little bit more volume, bit please? Or less muffled. What? 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 <laughs> <laughs> no. Is that the EQ? It? Yeah, that's not what it sounds like. That's not what it sounds like. <laughs> that's not what it sounds like. He's a terrible producer. <laughs> Um, sorry, yeah, that doesn't. I, yeah, oh well, that didn't work. But it's good. He's good. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, we're just excited that he he, he just seemed to have a quite a different sort of influences and stuff. So we thought that yeah, that could really work. And we yeah, we hope to be able to advise on releases and labels and collaborations. Or, yeah, anything that you want to do, really, we'll take your lead. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, we're, we're excited, um, and, and the fact that you're working with some vocals and stuff like that is is exciting too. So. Yeah, some, some good scope to what you can achieve over the next year, I think. So thank, thank you. <laughs> and Should we try play again, or...? I don't know, shall we? No. <laughs> he hasn't done anything, he's just sitting there. No, doing nothing. Um, and then, yeah, Scarlo's in the front row, I think. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, we've already mentioned that you've, uh, that a label that you're releasing on. Yeah. So. They actually sent me their new Secret Weapons playlist. Um, so, yeah, I saw you tracking there. Yeah, we seems some exciting music there. We thought it was great that you're doing vocals, your own vocals as well. Um, and, yeah, I was excited to work with you. Really good. Yeah, really, some really exciting music there, I think. So, yeah, exciting to work with you as well. A hand for Scala. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Couldn't do the little dash through your O, sorry. <laughs> I tried to. I, anyway. Yeah, 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 but yeah, check out the music on, on online if you can. And then what what we're gonna do is um, so we'll we'll hopefully be doing so us and Berlin Dance Event. We'll maybe try and do a couple of bit of content throughout the year. So we'll be talking about what we're doing and what we're trying to achieve. And then next year we can maybe present what we've done and see if it's worked or not. You know? It'll work. You can. <laughs> it were rubbish. Get rid of them. But uh, we'll see. Yeah. But so there. So hopefully we'll have something to talk about next year. That will continue the story and and um, yeah, not just be another dry talk, another dry panel. 
So yeah, so, I hope so you enjoy. Scott, are you a student here as well, or no? Okay, but uh, yeah, when one year we want to know what happened. Cameron, I know he's a student here, so we'll oh, keep he? track. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Very good. Good. So yeah, that's it until next year. Yeah. All right. Thank you.